So I'm starting the next paddle. It's based on Brian's book this time. I do not have a good piece of wood. I went wood shopping yesterday and I was able to find anything and the prices are insane. Uh, and not free piece of uh, Western Red Cedar 2x4s for $50. Uh, one place had 4x4s for 110 So I'm going to be using this piece, which is flat sawn, not, not quarter sawn. I don't want to go through the hassle of ripping it at a friend's house, rotating, gluing. It's just too much work right now. So I'm just going to be using this piece. Uh, it does have one knot in it and it's tiny on this side and it's, it's, it's nasty on this side. But it's just gonna miss the edge of the blade or it's gonna nick the edge of the blade. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Uh, this is the uh, paddle for my wife to see if she wants to learn Greenland paddles or not. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be good enough right now. Uh, first step in Brian's book is marking the center line. So that's, I've already marked that. Let's go mark the other end. Okay, it's a three inch wide, there's my pencil. I'm making a three inch wide blade, so this is set to one and a half. I already have a mark there. And you can see I already have a mark there. Okay, what Brian wants us to do <coughs> is make some slight cuts. That's sketchy as anything. I gotta cut myself there. I don't like that. Go down to the other end. Is that really correct? Double check. Yeah, it's correct. We'll check again. Okay, using a knife. <coughs> no need to go more than anything each to Brian says I should have read this. Attach the thread. I got some thread here. Tie a knot in the end. Exciting, huh? Pull the knot tight. So we got that. It didn't lock in, but it's not unreasonable. So I just slipped the thread under. So now I have a nice center line here. Easy to pencil. Okay, this is I'm using the the Pentel 4B leads. Hard to find, but you can find them. And it makes a really nice line. Uh, very dark, very soft. Move the thread. Get your straight edge. Mark those lines together. Do it here in the middle. Let's shut the camera up. This is kind of boring. You don't need to see this. I'll shut the camera off now and mark the other flat face and also the short sides. It's interesting because uh, this part is not part of the paddle, so marking a center here, well, I'm not sure where it's going to be going. We'll figure it out just in case it isn't obvious that. I mean by all four sides, I want to show the, the, the short sides now. Move the camera down. These are an inch and a half across. So half of inch and a half is three quarters. So this is set to three quarters. And I'll just put a mark here. Get my knife. Let's 
seam down here. Put the knot in there. Now that's the center line, a straight center line of this piece of wood. You know, if the piece of wood is was curved one way or the other, and if you had just measured marking every foot down like that, you would get a curved line. I got a nice straight line here. That's all, I'll mark it up now. So this piece of wood is a good example of why Brian's having us use a string or a thread to get the center line. Because here I am on the on the on this edge. Here I am on this edge, and I'm I'm marking it, and the string is visibly closer here to this side than it is to that side. And it's, you know, here it's maybe a sixteenth off, and when I go on this side, you can see you can see how it pushes the string away. I mean, that's just crazy how much it's off by. And I'm thinking, well, why? So I went down to this end and sighted along the string. I went down to that end and sighted along the string, and the string is, of course, straight because it's taut. But the wood has a slight bit of curve to it, and you can see that when you take your straight edge and put it along this side. And there's a gap right there. So the wood is bowed. And that's why we're using a string. So, yeah, I'd never done that before. That, that tip alone. Is, makes me happy that I'm doing it from the book because all my other paddles I I just ran down and I would have made a nice curve to it. So I have the board marked on all four sides in the centers. The next step is to mark the edges so you get your handy square out. Hard. That's always a little easier. So I've marked the center line on all four sides and I'm now marking the loom width. This paddle will have a loom width of 18 inches. If you remember last time I was using 16 because this is 16 but I want to give it a little bit of extra room to work with so that when I put this in I don't have to be right at the shoulder. So 8 and 18 is well it's one inch more on each side than 16. So I put this down at the nine mark, put it at the 18 mark. Draw some lines. So you now have the center line, the loom marked on all four sides. So now I need to mark the the edge profile. So it's step four, which is the tip thickness and the loom thickness. And the loom thickness is mostly guided by the desire to eventually use this. This is scant one and a quarter inches wide. It actually looks like 31 millimeters exactly. So I'll call it one and a quarter because I can work with that because I can always take wood off, make it fit. It's hard to add wood back. And yeah, I should be looking at the inner inner diameter. And that's Oh, inner is a uh, seven eighths. Interesting. No, but I have to use the outer because when it comes in, whereas I have to carve the inner to 7 eighths, it has to be flush with the rest of the loom, the, the wood part of the loom, which will be one and a quarter or scant one and a quarter. The other thing we have to do is how thick the, uh, the blade edges are going to be. And Brian 
has recommends between uh, three quarters of an inch and three eighths of an inch. Uh, you <clears throat> lose durability as you go narrower. You gain spring, and you lose weight as you go narrower. Uh, I'm going to go right in the middle of his recommendations, which is a half half inch. He says tapering to half inch will reduce the weight and add more spring to the blade. Since I'm making this for my wife, who has a wicked light, fancy carbon fiber Euro paddle. She likes light paddles, so I'm going to give up some durability. And because then again, this is a practice paddle. If, I, if she love, ends up loving it, I'll get a nice piece of wood you know, with the vertical grain, do the right thing, probably laminate it, make it beautiful. But So I'm going to go to a half inch on this. So let's and mark a quarter inch out on both sides. Oh, I can't pick it up to show you. <laughs> it's way too cumbersome. You know what a half inch looks like. Maybe I can. So I put it right there. Here's my center line. I go out a quarter inch go out a quarter inch and that should be half inch let's just confirm for sanity yep so from here to here is a half inch and Brian wants us to connect these lines which I'm not going to do because you've already showed how I put it back there and it's, it's so awkward with the camera I'm just not going to do it let's get the loom thickness down Loom thickness is one and a quarter inches, and half of one and a quarter inches is five eighths. So let's come up, and half of five eighths is five sixteenths, fortunately. Who said metric is better? So I'm, gonna, I'm back immediately because I'm looking at this, and that's, that's wrong. <laughs> I halved twice. If my loom's gonna be one and a quarter, I measure five eighths up from the center not half a 5 eighths. so let's do that again. Erase those marks. Eh, they don't erase, they're too dark. We'll go up 5 eighths. This is the eighth side, put it on a, a zero. Yeah, you can see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, because the loom is approximately the thickness of the side. Some people will just even use that. For, for my big hands, I, I don't I won't be shaving that down. One, two, three, four, five. Wow. This shows how bent this piece is. This is, this edge is essentially at the edge of the board. And this is well, quite far away. So that's why we do a center line. Neat. That's kind of cool. Now, you can see that I've marked this part that has to be removed, but nothing on this side because now I'm correcting for the, the curvature of the board here. So, first I have to confess something. I cheated. This end was the end that the sticker was on from the, uh, the lumber yard, and it was cut with a really rough blade. It was really hard to make marks because the, the glue from the sticker and the roughness. So I went upstairs and I used the, uh, the compound miter saw and just trimmed a hair off which got the glue off and you can see now the marks that I've made and there's something really curious about these that the where's my pencil you know this distance looks bigger than this distance this is absolutely tilted slightly and I confirmed I double checked my halves are there my halves are there so what this is doing is correcting for a bend in the blade. So again, that's that's really nice. Of course, I'm going to double check that assumption, make sure I haven't screwed something up. But that's why we use the string. So now it's time to connect the blade edges with the loom edges. And this is a, a pretty critical line to get right, and I don't want to screw it up. So I'm holding my straight edge in place with the clamp. I have the, the piece on a piece of scrap wood elevating it so the clamp can fit under. And of course the clamp wants to make the piece rotate so I just put a, a piece of scrap under there. And then I'll just mark it. So here's the center. Here's the start of the loom. Okay. 
This way I know that my straight edge is not going to jostle at all. see where the line starts it goes down to the, uh, the blade tip at the end I'll do all the others all the video so the, the so the edge profile on this half of the paddle is now laid out and I just want to show you what it looks like see how it tapers from a half inch out to the loom thickness taking into account the various curvatures that are on the uh, piece of wood this is this this is the side that bothered me last time in that part of it was an optical illusion in that my centered line here was drawn incorrectly but still you can see there is some some oddness going on there particularly these lines still aren't parallel but hey they're close enough I guess I'm not sure where to go from here I'm gonna do the right hand side of the paddle next so now I'm gonna be laying out the loom shape including the shoulders and that's on the uh, flat face of the blade. I've got my center line still here. If you recall, my loom thickness was a one and a quarter. So I've made marks five eighths inch up, below, above and below the center line, all three. Center loom. I'll connect them. My plastic ruler isn't long enough to go, so I gotta go from the center. Okay, now I need to get a 45 degree angle up there. Looks like this tool has a 45 on it, how convenient. I hate taking this apart. They make a tool for this, and I probably even have one, I just don't know where it is. <laughs> the angle of your loom is really a personal preference. There's people that have no loom, I mean, the angle of your shoulder is a personal preference. There's people with very smooth ones. I happen to like a fairly steep one, and this might not even be steep enough. Uh, we'll see how it goes when I start drawing the other lines in. And that's, I'll do this side and then do the other side. Oh yeah, actually, no, at this point I like doing this. Filling in some hash marks. It helps me better see the, what the remaining wood is. You know, when you, this stuff, the stuff of the hash marks is the stuff that gets cut away. I try to remember to do that when I got the straight edge, but I forgot this time. So I made a mistake, but fortunately it's just in pencil marks, and it's worth going over. I misinterpreted Brian's instructions. Oh, I skipped ahead and misinterpret Brian's instructions. Brian's instructions are pretty clear on what to do. But here's my loom length line. So from here to here is the length of the loom. I have my 45 degree shoulders coming up from there. The next step is tapering the blade. And so I'm looking at, you know, how I have to remove this wood down. I'm removing those lines I just drew. And that's because of course, in the book, Brian has these lines coming up around here. He goes three eighths of an inch in here and then goes up. So I will redraw these, easy enough. So we can see here the final drawing of the of the loom. Ah. We have the tiny shoulders here, 45 degree angle, three it's in, at the loom thickness here. We have the loom thickness here, which is just slightly less than the uh, thickness of the wood. Repeat on this side, repeat on this side, and you can also see, I think I already showed you, that the uh, blade edges are also marked out. The next step is the best step at all, the basic shaping where you get to use 
my planes. I'm probably not going to do that today. I think I want to call it quits, put the video together and go do something fun that doesn't involve being in the basement. Talk to you later.